What's the most disturbing genre in movies? For some people, horror is where our nightmares come to life. We all go a little mad sometimes. It's a character that has survived as a pop cultural icon. Creepy as F? I'm Eli Roth, back with the biggest stars and darkest minds in horror. Join us for a deep dive into even more of the scariest horror classics. All right, welcome to Cherry the Geek TV. I'm Joe Van Orney, and joining me today is Kurt Sienga, the executive producer, showrunner, writer of Eli Ross, The History of Horror, uh, which is uh, having its season two premiere on AMC Network Saturday, October 10th. Kurt, how are you today? I'm good. Good, good. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I was wondering if we can start off before we start talking about season two, uh, going back to season one, uh, what was the genesis, the seed uh, uh, of this project? Were you always involved from the beginning or were you approached uh, to executive produce it? How, how did you come on board and, and get involved with the project? Actually, I think uh, Eli uh, had the project with uh, two other uh, two executive producers, uh, Allison Berkeley and Joseph Freed. And I saw this on the development board just written history of horror when I walked into the offices of a place called Asylum Entertainment. And I said, what's that? And they said, oh, show about horror. And I said, I want to do that. And um, here I am. Because I was, I was looking at your, your background on IMDb and, and, and it seems like most of the projects you had done before this were more uh, science-based, technology-based documentaries mm -hmm. um, uh, through the wormhole being probably your, your most uh, no notable one. Were you a, a, a horror fan going into this? Is, is that why you wanted to be involved? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm a horror fan and a film buff and whatever you want to say, <laughs> cinephile, you know. Um, and, um, and I thought it would be great to do a series like this because particularly when I heard what AMC and Eli had in mind, which is something that wasn't just a clip show, but something that would go into more depth like to both introduce casual fans to deeper cut films and to also look at like an academic perspective where these films sit in the social political scene and also just to look at the filmmaking craft which is a personal interest of mine as a director and all of that so and so it's a great opportunity to meet a lot of people who are doing a lot of interesting things and horror is a place where filmmakers can go places and deal with themes that you really can't get much of an audience for, I think, unless you are in the constraints of the genre. You know, that's actually part of the appeal. So Jordan Peele could have made a film about racism and would probably not have had the audience that Get Out had. But Get Out had all of the great, you know, kind of genre tropes and sort of little satirical humor is able to use that format to get that to a massive audience. I, I kind of wanted to talk to you about uh, the, the audience for this. When you were conceiving this and, and, and setting about uh, making it, you know, there's a, there, there are the two different audiences. There's the hardcore horror fanatics who, who probably seen every, like yeah. myself included, I've seen every movie that, mm -hmm. that you're documenting in, in the series uh, and, and have seen, you know, the the DVD features and the audio commentary, so I kind of know the backgrounds of most of these mm -hmm. movies anyway. But you got your newbie audience or or your younger audience that maybe hasn't deep dived into into a lot of the films. What what's the balance? What, how how is it you know maintaining that balance of of uh, of yeah meeting both well, audiences? Well, that's that's yeah that's where I you know that's really what I do. That's really the hardest part of it is uh, comes together in the writing and when I'm interviewing people then trying to put that into this shape that both appeals to a general audience, but also has something to offer people like us. And, um, and yeah, that balance is difficult basically because you will, you know, I will always want to go in, into deeper, more probably, you know, nerd friendly territory. <laughs> but, uh, but then you always have to keep in mind that, oh, there are people who are just tuning in because they see, Oh, something about Carrie, you know, film everybody's seen. And then, you're hoping they'll see that and then say, uh, watch the rest of it where we go into a film like Who Can Kill a Child, which I would 
fairly guarantee maybe 95 to 99 percent of the audience has never heard of you know right what uh looking back on season one what are your personal uh, highlights what do you think worked the best and uh maybe what are some things maybe you you wish you could have gone back and added or or what something might be missing that you that you wish you would have included well, see, I, I tend to look at this all as a marathon. So I'm not, I was always looking beyond a season one, hoping that season one would do well enough that we could do something like season two, where we're able to get into deeper cut horror films and a season three where, you know, I'm hoping that will happen and we can go farther into international films and into, you know, more, also more classic history. Like this season we do King Kong, which is something that I desperately wanted to do earlier, but, now you know, it's I'm able to give it the time and the space to do that. A lot of it's more just about who you can get and when you can get them. So, so if there are things missing from season one, it's probably just, I wish I could have even gotten more interviewees. I mean, I interviewed a hundred people for it, but still there's always <laughs> far more interviewees. And this season's like another 70 I think, new people. Um, I think the episodes, it really worked. I think the slashers part one and two were quite well as far as bouncing, like the look at both the films themselves and the kind of enjoyment people get out of them and also uh, why they were appealing, particularly during their height. And it got more into kind of the, you know, social context of slasher films. For those that are watching this, uh, uh, you can catch season one. Uh, currently, they're uh, rerunning it on AMC uh, leading up into, into season two. That, so they're available on AMC On Demand. Uh, they're also available on the Shutter app. And then there's a Blu-ray and DVD of season one, which is uh, just getting released as well. So let's uh, look, move into to season two. Uh, you've got six hours, six different topics. And uh, in the first season, you did you hit the if you were doing a family feud of of uh, top six uh, answers on the board of what the what are the most popular horror genres you kind of covered that in season one with the zombie films and the vampire films slasher films uh season two you're going uh, i i i'm gonna pay you this is gonna sound like a diss at first but it's it's actually a compliment mm -hmm. you're, you're you're going down a tier like when i read the titles of what the what the stories are for season two houses of hell uh, monsters, body horror, witches, chilling children, and Nightmare Nine. My initial reaction was like, oh, that, well, that's obvious. You know, they cover all the, the A-list stuff in the first season. And so I don't know going in if I was as, as excited, uh, even though, I, you know, I love season one. But I, I've seen the first two episodes, Houses of Hell and Monsters. And I think those are my two favorite episodes so far uh, out of everything that I've seen. So, so... Good. Going into like houses of hell, that's not my favorite no. genre necessarily, you know. You know, but but then watching the films that you chose and talking about them, I, I'm like, you know what? I, I love these films. I love all these films. I'm I'm, I'm glad they they uh, they dove into this. Uh, let Let's go through each um, each episode and just you know preview it for the audience as well without spoiling it. Uh, first sure. episode, houses of hell. Uh, what can uh, fans and and viewers expect from from that? Well, let's see, Houses of Hell is uh, both about haunted houses and murder houses, and usually murder houses wind up being haunted houses and horror, of course. Uh, so that gives you a range of films from uh, Misery and to uh, Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses, which is very much on the other end of the horror spectrum, as far as lurid and crazy. Um, and... Uh, also, Last House, the infamous Last House on the Left, of course, is covered in that because you can't do it without that. And um, one of my uh, favorites, Dirksen's Cabin in the Woods. Sister. And Cabin in the Woods, yeah, yeah. also very big favorite of mine, um, which is anybody who's into these kind of films, that has to be your favorite film. Yeah. Um, and um, let's see, Monsters which is probably my, I'm tied for favorite episodes. Monsters and Nine Nightmares are probably my favorites. So for very different reasons. And Monsters, I am like Greg Nicotero, uh, a monster guy. So it's great. It, it, monster says Alien, of course. And, um, and John Carpenter's The Thing, the greatest film 
of all time. <laughs> I agree, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, and um, and many other monsters. So, um, in that film, in King Kong, of course, so and Godzilla, and um, and the point ultimately of that episode is also to look at how special effects have evolved because you really see that transition in uh, monster movies above anything of like how it goes from stop motion animation to men in suits to computer and to robotic appliances and then ultimately to where we are now with computer generated monsters and sort of you know that's a perennial battle of course is is that a good thing <laughs> i think it at this point, the consensus seems to be maybe a little of this and a little of that, and maybe you put them together. Like Guillermo del Toro basically has it right, I think. So he blends them just about perfectly. Um, Body Horror is the episode I'm most surprised that I got onto uh, television. Um, it's probably, of course, one of the most extreme branches of horror and, um, and you know, Ground Zero's Cronenberg and we cover a uh, videodrome and the fly in detail. Also get into areas of body horror. One of the things I try to sort of slip in there in one of the acts is that body horror is different things for different people. It's not just things being sawed off, but um, I also think for women in the society, body horror is just walking around in a female body because then you are immediately become a target. So. There is a section that addresses that that goes into the film Under the Skin, uh, Scarlett Johansson, which is a really interesting movie, and the film Audition, another favorite of mine, um, where, <laughs> well, you know, this thing about this episode, uh, all the series is it automatically contains spoilers because we sort of have to address what the film is about. You can't really address what Audition is about without revealing that, oh, it's a romantic comedy. It turns into the grisliest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> so, but, uh, but that's there. Um, and moving on, there's uh, the episode Witches, which airs in Halloween. And that covers, as you would expect, the witch and also hereditary. I was very happy to get Ari Aster in this uh, this season, and he's really good, really articulate, and there's a lot of interesting things to say about that. Which is also has Suspiria, of course, which is one of the great tent poles of the genre, I think. Um, and next episode is Chilling Children, which leads off with Carrie, and goes into. A Village of the Damned, um, then Children of the Corn, and then a movie called Who Can Kill a Child that I referenced previously that I think is one of the great, really legitimately disturbing films ever made. Uh, it's very well acted, so and it's definitely not for everybody, but uh, at the same time, the message of that film is really supposed to be about uh, how many children have died in wars and through the years and essentially what happens if they all, you know, turn on the adults. So, um, so it's sort of children of the corn, but with more depth. I'd say. So, um, and then, and then nine the, nightmares. The, the yeah. final episode, this nightmare nine. Now I haven't watched mm. it yet, but uh, right before I went to bed last night, uh, it was like 4 a.m. and I had to get to sleep, but I did watch the first minute of it because I was curious what what this was going to be, and I literally squealed and shouted yes at the top of my lungs four in the morning because uh, I, I saw the films that you're previewing, and I was like, okay, I get this episode. I think this might be the episode that I'm most excited for. Talk about Nightmare Nine. I think this episode is the most reflective of the series because it really embraces the whole of the genre from art horror to sleazy slasher films. And it just shows how much you can do with horror and how you can address all these different kind of issues and also in so many different styles of film. So we've got things like um, Dressed to Kill is in it and um, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, like two, you know, beautiful, artful, violent <laughs> movies. Uh, then you have the infamous film Pieces, one of the great trash films of all time, <laughs> and, uh, which we actually have a decent explanation of why Pieces may actually be a profound masterpiece. Although you can definitely also see it just for being a ridiculous uh, piece of crap. Um, but, uh, but it's sort of lovable in its way. Um, and uh, it's... Oh gosh, 
going through the nine in my head. I mentioned the Wicker Men and Midsommar are also in it, as um, since clearly there are parallels between those two. But, um, and when I say the Wicker Man, I do not mean the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man, of right. course. I mean, <laughs> Edward Woodward. <Robert> Wicker Man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, and, oh, and this Creep Show is, in, of course, a big personal favorite uh, of all of us. And, um, and that goes heavy with Stephen King and Thomas Savini uh, for this. So. so, yeah, this episode sounds fantastic. All, four, all six of these episodes start uh, October 10th. Uh, and, and will air Saturday nights on AMC. One of the things, uh, as, as uh, somebody who's, who's seen every horror film and, and wanted more from, from, from what, you know, watching the series, uh, there's a podcast that, that's uh, available on the Shutter app, and I believe it's available through uh, different podcast apps uh, as well, uh, where, you, uh, where the show airs the... Uh, plays the unedited uh, full interviews. Uh, season one has uh, the full interview with Stephen King, full interview with Quentin Tarantino, full interview with Greg Nicotero and, and Rob Zombie. I read that the season two is also, uh, I think it was just announced a few days ago, will also be airing an uncut version at some point as well. Yeah, um, that actually started um, a few days ago on Monday. And, um, and in fact, um, I wasn't directly involved with the, what they do with season one, but I'm doing, I'm producing season two. So I'm actually sitting here right now, editing them, um, going through and cutting up, you know, all ums and pauses for card changes and whatever. So, and I'm really happy about that because I think the, these conversations at length definitely go way deeper than we're allowed to by the boundaries of television. Because of course, for those, television for those that are watching this interview, if, yeah. if you haven't listened to these uncut interviews, I, I listened to the Quentin Tarantino one yesterday and it's, it's fantastic. And I did the yeah, Stephen Quentin's King great. one as well. They're just, mm -hmm. they're just, they go into stuff that wasn't included in the show, other films, other films. And, and it's just absolutely amazing. We're, who, who are some of the new, we're all returning people and some of the new guests that you've got uh, talking about the films uh, for season two? Well, Joe Dante is back, of course, and Joe's awesome and knows all. <laughs> sees all. And um, I'm always happy to have him. And Mick Garris, who's another person, again, human film encyclopedia, and has been augmented by other people with uh, equally deep wells of knowledge, like Ari Aster. Um, Keith Gordon, who's, who's the ac and young actor in Dress to Kill and has become a very successful director. And Keith's terrific and just knows uh, so much about film and learns so much by watching De Palma work. Uh, Bill Hader, uh, who you mentioned the podcast, actually. Bill is like podcast guest number one. Um, and Bill is obviously really fun and does some yeah. awesome, he does a great impression of Wilford Brimley in The Thing. It's really <laughs> okay. worth listening to. And that is not in the TV series, but it's worth, worth hearing. And Patrick McGowan in Scanners. So, um, uh, see, Megan Fox, actually, who I wanted for season one uh, to talk about Jennifer's body. And we got Karen, Karen Kasama and Diablo Cody for that. But um, Megan actually talks more about just gender and sexism and she's featured a lot in witches and chilling children so um nancy allen who's in carrie and dressed kill and robocop and blowout many others uh this season she's really delightful i think tanana reeve do was uh, a big featured player in season one and this season she returns and she has a lot of very cogent analysis of the film, I think, in a way that's also not too academic and that she can look at them critically, but she also still is a fan, so, which is kind of person I try to find. Um, I mean, the thing I think that makes this film unusual is how many scholars we have in it, as well as just filmmakers. So. Are there any people, who, who's on your list of, of, of your wish list of people that you, <laughs> you wish you could interview? People that maybe aren't even with us anymore, like Vincent Price or James Whale oh, okay. or uh, Well, if you open up there, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, of course, all those. And, um, you know, Boris Karloff, <laughs> um, all the usual suspects, Howard Hawks even, to, you know, Christian Nyby to find out how much uh, really went into the directing of uh, the 1950s, the thing. Um, Alfred Hitchcock would actually be number one, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Brian De Palma would still be nice to get. Uh, Guillermo de Toro actually wants to do the show and wasn't able to do season two owing to all sorts of things. There's been some unpleasantness in the world, sort of interfered with the production schedule a little. Uh, but, um, and Quentin actually, we want to get to sit down. Um, he's even been doing some, some press for this. He's uh, in a, the Paley Fest that he and uh, Eli are doing to talk about the show. So, okay. and um, Edgar Wright, I always like to have back too. Um, gosh. Carpenter is also a big one, of course. So, but um, Carpenter, I, I thought was I, I felt his his voice was missing. I, I I wish. Yeah. Did you did you go after him and is, is it oh yeah work out? Just yes, it didn't work out. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, yes, uh, we, before we, we, we go, went after like uh, another final question. <laughs> I have two two more yep. questions with you. Uh, sure. uh, it looks like I, you mentioned at the beginning how how you see this going into future seasons. Uh, and, and talked a little bit about uh, where you see that going, maybe with foreign, you know, examining foreign horror films, and 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 how 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 far into the future do you, can you foresee this going? Well, ten seasons, seven seasons. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, but I think uh, I I have enough for uh, three and four, for sure. And there's still a lot of good things we haven't haven't hit yet. So uh, much like. You know, this season where like, the more I dug into it, the more I'm like, oh, there's a ton of stuff we haven't done yet. So, and uh, I think you could even do like a, a season where you just focus on like a, like an episode only on John Carpenter films or an episode only on George Romero films. Or there's there's yeah. endless possibilities of, of uh, exactly of where you can go. Final mm -hmm. question: Your personal three favorite horror films. Go. Oh gosh. Okay, uh, the thing. John Carpenter's the thing. <laughs> um, Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, and um, hmm. it's a toss up between Carrie and Audition, but I'll probably go for Audition because wow. that's the horror film that actually managed to disturb me and I rarely get disturbed by anything. I hear you, I hear you. Well, Kurt, thank you so much for chatting with us here on Cherry the Geek TV. Uh, Eli Ross, The History of Horror, Season two premiering AMC October 10th. Uh, and then we'll end the subsequent five episodes on uh, each Saturday night, also available on AMC On Demand and eventually on the Shutter app. Kurt, thank you so much for chatting. Thank you. Have a great day.